Today I've got a nice algebra problem that comes from the 1994 Swedish National Math Olympiad. What I like about this problem is on the surface, it looks like all we need to do is solve a fairly simple algebraic equation. But solving it is not the hard part. Determining some sort of fact about the solutions is the hard part. So anyway, let's look at our problem here. So the equation x times the square root of eight plus one over x times the square root of eight equals the square root of eight has two real solutions. We'll call them x1 and x2. And in fact, along the path, we'll actually find those solutions. Although there's a method to do this problem where we don't find those solutions. The 1994th digit of x1 is the number six. And then our goal is to determine what the 1994th digit of x2 is. So we're using some information about some digit way down the line of x1 to find similar information about x2. Okay, so anyway, let's maybe first solve this equation and see where we can go from there. So what I'd like to do is rationalize this equation. Well, maybe rationalize it and turn it into a polynomial equation. And what I mean by rationalize it is like get rid of this square root of eight part and then turn it into a polynomial equation by getting this x out of the denominator. Okay, so what steps can I take to do that? Well, in this case, it's not so hard. What we'll do is take this entire equation and we'll multiply it by x times the square root of eight. So let's see what that leaves us with. So here we'll have x squared times the square root of eight squared. In other words, we'll have eight x squared. Here we'll have one over x times the square root of eight times itself. In other words, just the number one. And then finally over here, we will have eight times x for similar reasons. So like I said, here we have eight times x. And now let's move some things around a little bit. So we can move some things around and we'll get eight x squared plus, or that should be minus eight x equals negative one. Now what I'd like to do here is work towards completing the square so we can find a solution. So let's see, we can factor maybe not an eight out, but let's factor a two out. That'll give us four X squared minus four X. And then we've got minus one over here. Then next up, what I'll do is I'll add a one inside of these parentheses. The one goes inside the parentheses to complete the square there. Notice now this is a perfect square binomial. We're about to factor it. But if we add one inside of the parentheses here, then that means we also have to add one, well, not one, but two times one to the right hand side of the equation. So let's do that. So we're adding two to the other side of the equation. Now let's notice that we have two and then two X minus one quantity squared equals the number one. In other words, we have two X minus one equals plus minus one over the square root of two after moving some things around. And then finally, we have X equals, let's see, it'll be one half plus minus one over two times the square root of two. Okay, so those are our two solutions. And from what's given, we don't know which one of these is x1 and which one is x2. But what we can see is the sum of x1 and x2, as well as um, a quick approximation of x1 and x2. Okay, so let's notice that a half is 0.5, and then this is one over the square root of eight. But the square root of eight is a little bit less than the square root of nine. So that tells us one of our solutions is gonna be 0.5 plus one over something that's a little bit less than three. So in other words, we'll have 0 0.8, and then we don't know the rest of the digits, so I'll just write them as a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, 
so on and so forth. So those are the digits that remain from that number. Okay, but that's our first solution. Our second solution comes from our half minus one over something that's a little bit less than three. So in other words, it's one half minus something a little bit bigger than one third. So we know it's a little bit bigger than one third just by taking the reciprocal of something that's a little bit less than um, three. So anyway, that gives us our first digit over here of 0 0.1. And then we'll have B2, B3, B4, and so on and so forth. And I'd like to reiterate that just as before, we don't know which one of these is x1 and which one is x2, but x1 is one of them and x2 is the other one. Another thing that we know from this format of x is the sum of x1 and x2. And I'll write this as a fact, although it's really easy to see from our solution. So we have x1 plus x2 is equal to the number 1. We actually could have gotten that without solving the equation, just using the something called Vieta's formula. But now here comes the tricky part. Since each of these numbers is equally spaced away from the number one half, and one half can be expressed as 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on and so forth, we know that none of these numbers right here can sum to 10. And that's because one of them occurs from adding the decimal expansion of one over two times the square root of two to the number zero, you know, once you get far enough out into the decimal expansion. And the other one comes from subtracting that and carrying. So all of that means the following also fact, so maybe fact number two, is that an plus bn is not equal to 10 for all n bigger than or equal to 2. Good. And again, that's because these are both equally spaced from a terminating rational number, this terminating rational number being 0.5. Okay, but now that seems to cause a problem because this one ends with a bunch of zeros. But the important thing to do here is to express this one as 0 0.9999 repeating and so on and so forth. So now putting these two things together, what we see is that in fact, since these are not equal to 10, they must be equal to nine for all natural numbers n bigger than or equal to two. So we have an plus bn equals nine. But now we know that the 1994th digit of x1 is six, so that means the 1994th digit of x2 must add to 6 to achieve 9. So that means our final answer is 3. And one thing that we don't know, we don't know that whether or not that's a sub 1994 or b sub 1994, because again, we don't actually know which one of these is x1 or x2. So if you've stuck around this long and you haven't subscribed to the channel, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Maybe also like the video and leave a comment if you'd like. I also have a second channel that is devoted more to coursework in mathematics. It's called Math Major. And also you can support the channels on Patreon. Those are the three best ways to support this goal of mine of spreading mathematics to everyone. And that's a good place to stop.